Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a brand new video today. It's all about career mode. It's all about what I want to see in FIFA 18, possibly FIFA 19, seeing as actually we're not too far away from the release of FIFA 18. So some of the things I'm talking about today, there may not be enough time for them to even think about implementing it into FIFA 18. So that could be pushed on into FIFA 19. But as you know, I do this every single year. And it's kind of sad because it feels like I go through the same list every year. They may add little bits here and there to career mode. And of course, we all kind of are thankful for that. It's nice that they still add little bits to it. But let's be honest, year on year, we're always left a little bit disappointed. That career mode feels a little bit neglected. They need to do more with it. So uh, today, this could be a long video. I'm going to go through quite a lot of things that I think need changing, adding, removing from career mode. Let's get straight into it. So just the other day, I uploaded a video talking about general things, the menus, etc, etc. So if you want to go back onto the channel and watch that wish list first, that does make sense. I talked a little bit about how I think the game needs just to be a bit more smooth, faster loading times, the menu needs to be changed a little bit. And I also discussed a few things like edit player, um, training mode, things like that. So although I'm only going to briefly talk about those today, I still think it might be good for you to go back and watch that first. So the first thing I've got here, I've got a long list. So forgive me if I'm not looking directly at you. I need to be reading my notes. So basically, my first point was edit player. So the ability to edit player stats, position manually in the edit player menu. So not just in the main menu, but when you're in career mode, being able to change the stats yourself. It could do really great things for the community in terms of coming up with new series ideas and being able to change your players yourself instead of just training mode. Yes, you could cheat. You can win the Champions League by making all your players 99. But who cares? It's offline. It doesn't matter. The other thing I've got as well is uh, the ability to adjust work rates, skill moves and weak foot. For the odd occasion where you get that really, really amazing regen or youth player. But they have one star weak foot, two star skills and they're low, low work rates. It just sucks. So it'd be great if they could let us change that although again you could you could really cheese it couldn't you and make all your best players five star five star but again it doesn't matter it's offline it's not affecting anyone else but yourself it shouldn't be an issue i've also got the ability to change players appearance including haircuts and accessories again it's not a big deal i get it if players are licensed you know you can't really change griezmann's hair into an afro because he would be unhappy that you're doing that but it shouldn't matter again it's offline it really doesn't matter at least let it be so you can change your youth players, your regens, because you'll notice actually in my Nottingham Forest career mode, which finished a couple of days ago, actually it might have been a week ago by now, by the way, new career mode will be coming soon, I had an Ibrahimovic regen, his picture was completely different to the player in game, and he looked a bit silly to be honest, so it would have been nice to be able to change that. But moving on, I've got improved training mode, I don't think I need to really go on about that too much, but certainly in career mode, they could improve the training feature. I've got here the ability to train a player to play in a new position. So similar to Ultimate Team, I guess, maybe you could make it so you can change a centre back, not a centre back, sorry, a centre forward into a striker, or you can turn a striker into a cam. But also maybe they could change things like turning a centre back into a centre defensive midfielder. It is frustrating when you get a player that's perfect for a position that you want him to play in, but doesn't officially play that position. So it'd be nice if you could actually train those players into new positions like so many other football games have, including Football Manager, which I'll probably be using as an example quite a lot in this video. Also, custom training drills to improve stats of your choice. So instead of doing these generic dribbling drills, shooting drills, maybe you can make your own shooting, not shooting, make your own training drill where you can include a bit of shooting, a bit of dribbling and do it all in one go instead of having this constant stop start feel to training mode. But that's just something that I've, uh, I've found over the years. It gets a little bit tedious, you know, it's nice to do things quite quickly. Up next, youth academy and reserve squad. So I've got here having a separate squad from your first team uh, for youth and reserve players. In real world football, you have your first team, you have your second team, you have your reserves team. It'd be great to take control and almost get your reserve players playing in different games. So they're not, not being used ever. They're actually getting involved in other matches while you're playing first team games as well. So just having a separate squad menu where you've got reserve players, I think that would be great. And also the ability to call up and drop players from your youth and reserve squad 
at any point. So if one of your players is just performing so well for the reserve squad, just being able to call it up to the first team and drop another first team member that's not doing so well. Just being able to chop and change players, make it feel a little bit more realistic. You know, managers do this all the time. If a youngster's playing well for the reserve team, it's, it's not uncommon for him to suddenly be in the first team. Next, we've got loan players. The ability to negotiate a percentage of wages to pay rather than always paying 100%. A lot of the time in real-world football, if a team has a young player, they know he's got potential but isn't quite ready for the first team, they loan him off to a smaller team and actually contribute to his wages. So you've still, you've still got some control of the player. He's still your player. You can recall him at any time, but you're also contributing to the wages and the other team get to use him in games. Why can't we do that in career mode? I don't know. It's very, very basic. You send a player out on loan and they pay the wages. It's as simple as that. It should be a little bit different when you when you approach a team and say, I want to loan. Let's say you want to loan Jack Wilshire from Arsenal. I don't know why you would want to, but let's say you do. He's going to be like 150 grand a week, 100 grand a week, something stupid like that. You should be able to say, look, we'll, we'll take him on loan. You can have him back at any time, but we only want to pay 30,000 per week. You need to contribute the rest. And maybe that's something they could put into the game at some point. Just a bit more realism. Also, the ability to loan players for one month. These are emergency loans. They're, they're, they're actually happening in real life. A, a lot of the time during the winter months when squads are just getting overrun by games, a lot of injuries, a lot of suspensions, they have emergency loans where players join just for four weeks. It would be amazing because actually one at one point in the Nottingham Forest career mode, all of my wingers were injured. It would have been great to get an emergency loan. Instead, I had to get a free transfer, which was a waste of money in the end. So moving on, moving on to the next point, we've got transfers. So more variety in transfers made by the CPU controlled clubs. Oh God, I could go on this, this topic for a while. So this year, I'd say it's not necessarily about certain players moving to the same club, although it still happens. It's actually clubs buying the same sort of player. Manchester United, for me, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree, always buy so many strikers. All of the world's best strikers end up at Manchester United and it drives me mad. There's so many images I get tweeted to me where they go, oh my god, look at Man United's squad and they've got Griezmann, Icardi, Lukaku, Kane, Ibrahimovic. They've got all of these world-class strikers and it's just completely stupid really. Also, I got here, um, enable CPU teams to offer you player swaps and player plus cash deals. It's kind of boring, isn't it? Just selling a player to a team. Why can't they say, all right, we're really interested in uh, one of your players. Can we offer this player plus a bit of cash? Would you do a swap deal? Instead of always involving money, why can't we do a swap with them? You know, why can't they say, we want your striker, we'll give you our striker. You know, it, it happens. It does happen in real life. So that'd be really cool. Moving on now to our next one, we have contracts. Now, the ability to add release and buyback clauses into contracts. This is a very common thing these days. Maybe you don't want your player up for sale, but you want to put a release clause in there. So if someone pays you a certain amount of money, they can talk and they can make the transfer happen. But you know you're getting a certain amount. Maybe you could also put a buyback clause in. Maybe you've sold your striker, but you think there's still an element that he could be absolutely amazing. And one day you just want to buy him back. So why not put a buyback clause in the contract so you don't ever have this issue of, Oh, you've sold him before. You can't buy him again. That's that's not good. You know, he's not interested in talking with you. It just completely sucks, that does. So adding that to the contract system would be amazing. Now, this next topic is big for me, and I know a lot of people don't like it, but simulation. I know a lot of people, when watching career modes, don't like it when they, you know, simulate games, when YouTubers simulate games. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of YouTubers that do career mode. We all seem to agree that Simulation is still a big part of the game. You know, it's still testing your squad, but at the moment, it's it's rubbish. It really is. If it's an away game, you're pretty much going to lose, regardless of who the op opponent is. There's no control. You make yourselves before the game even starts. You can't control anything as soon as you press simulate. So why could we not have a pause button so you can make tactical changes and substitutions yourself during the simulation? Why can you not pause the game, enter it, and play the rest of the game? This was actually in old FIFA titles. You could actually stop the simulation in the 30th minute or whatever. Let's say you're losing 2-0 and just jump into the game there. Why, why is that not a thing? Also, better teams should get more realistic results when simulating away games. So let's say you're Barcelona and you're coming up against one of the relegation zone battle, uh, one of the relegation battle teams, you know, and you, you really should be beating them 3 or 4-0. 
but it's an away game and they beat you 2-0. It, I know it can happen, but it happens too often, I feel. And also, why is there not live in-game stats, such as possession, shots taken, shots in the box, passing, accuracy? Why can we not see anything? It's literally just the result, who scored, who got injured, who got sent off, who got a yellow card done. That's it. I want to know what happened in the game. And do you know what? I think career mode is obviously... It's, it's, it's being uploaded a lot these days by a lot of people, and it, it does get boring. It'd be great if simulating had a bit more to it so we could do faster series. You could, you could do these experiment videos that seem to be doing really well right now, where a lot of it is simulating. You could just do so much more with it. So I think simulation is a key area they need to invest and improve in. Up next, we've got staff management. So the ability to hire staff and improve certain aspects of your club slash squad uh, for example, you could bring in fitness staff, medical staff, uh, first team coaches for goalkeepers, you know, just improve their, their goalkeeping. It, it would be so nice to have more control on how the, the, the squad as a whole improves, not just saying, I want this guy to have a better overall, putting him in training and you see his stats grow. That, that's, that's cool, but it's not good enough, is it? Why can we not bring in staff? This used to be in old FIFA games. Also, player interaction, the ability to approach players that request to leave and discuss it with them. How annoying is it when one of your best players wants to leave because the weather's bad? Why can we not talk to the player? Instead of just offering a new contract or just selling them, why are we not able to negotiate with them? Say, look, if you can stay for the next year, we can talk. Or, you know, you can take a break if you want. You can have a few weeks off and come back feeling better. You know, just, just give us something more to it. It really is frustrating when that happens because you feel so helpless. Also, the ability to give team talks before and after games. That is so big. You want, you want to be able to praise the team for winning. You want to be able to show disappointment if they lose. And it should affect how your team plays in the next match. When you lose a game in real life, especially if you played well, normally you'd feel really disappointed, but you're raring to go and to prove, prove to yourself and your management that it was just a one-off, that you're going to win the next game. Sometimes if you get battered and you lose a game... You're not going to play well in the next game either. You kind of enter some poor form. Well, you get none of that in FIFA. And I would love to be able to talk before the game to the squad and say, look, this is a big game against Man United or whatever. It's a, it's a derby. Let's win this game. Let's beat them. And then at the end, if we've won, if we've lost, just have a conversation with the players and try and get them raring to go for the next game. It'd be really, really cool. Uh, next thing, media interaction. So more options when speaking to the media, including multiple choice questions and answers. You get this in the journey a little bit, but it's very, it's kind of meh. It's it's cool, I guess, but why can't we do this in, in career mode for real, like after matches? Why aren't the media asking us questions? How did the game go? Why did you make this substitution? What's the plan for the rest of the month? Do you think you're going to win the league? Things like that. You should be able to answer these questions and have some sort of reputation. You know how you've got the manager rating. Why can't we use that and have questions where we've got to, you know, seem like we know what we're doing. Like, let's say you're having a really bad season. You need to be able to keep the fans with you and on your side. You need to talk properly and make sure you're answering the questions correctly. If you don't, you lose more rating. It'd be really, really good fun and an actual challenge to keep the, the, the fans happy with you, you know? Also, reporters bringing up rumours and stories for you to discuss in match conferences. Make a player unsettled. Say, oh, we've heard that uh, Martial wants to leave. What What's your thoughts on that? And you just... Just being able to dispel rumours or actually, you know, say yes, it could be happening, Martial is going, and then you receive more bids, you know, just just make this a bit more realistic, not just about playing games and training players, make it more about you as the manager and as the club, you know, it would be so much better. And this, this is another one that I, I knew I was going to enjoy talking about, the fixture list. So the ability to request game postponements due to fixture list congestion. This is so, so huge. And it's been a problem for years in career mode. I can't remember the last FIFA game where this wasn't an issue. Sometimes you'll have three games in four days. Sometimes you have a game on Christmas Day. Sometimes you have two games next to each other. Well, what is that? That would never happen. So I get it. It, it can't be perfect. I'm sure that... It's really difficult to code the game correctly so fixture lists are perfect every time. So why is there not like a button to postpone match? Why is there not something that you can do to affect it? To say, you know, this match is too close. Move it, you know? Why, why can't we do that? Also, the ability to rearrange games manually within a limited range of days. 
<clears throat> or why 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 do you just have to put up with what the fixture list throws at you? If you do have two games in three days, you can decide, yeah, okay, that's fine, I can do it. Or you just move it by one day. You know, I guess it, it kind of defeats the realism. You should just be doing what you're given. So I understand if they never did this. But it is annoying getting two games next to each other. You should be able to delay one, move it, because that's what they would do in real life. Up next, and I know this is a long, long video. I'm, I'm not even done yet, guys. Sponsorships. The ability to raise additional funds by signing sponsorship deals. <clears throat> How many times have we wanted something like this in a game where you don't have enough money at the end of the transfer window when January comes around? You want to bring in a player, but you just don't have the funds. Or also... Maybe you just feel like your club is really, really not doing so well and you need an injection of cash. Clubs do this all the time. They sign sponsorship deals. Let Adidas sponsor my club and give me 400 million, million a season. Just something crazy like that. Okay, that's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but why is there nothing like that in the game? It doesn't even have to be real companies and real brands. Why can't we be sponsored by a random toothpaste? You know, just chuck, chuck their branding on the page or something and... You're sponsored by them and you're earning money. It'd be really cool. Sponsor the stadium, you know, just banners, things like that, just to bring in some more money because it feels like there's not much you can do with finances in the game. Once you've got a certain amount of money, that's kind of it. You can't even ask the board for more money in FIFA 17. That was literally in FIFA 16. So hopefully something like that returns. Uh, club finance, the ability to adjust ticket prices, that'd be cool. Uh, to add ticket sales and sponsorship funds into your club budget. Sometimes the money you earn in career mode doesn't even go into your money. It, it just somehow disappears. You know, the 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 club just kind of sucks it up. I, I don't know where it even goes. I just won the Champions League and the Premier League. I've got 140 million in prize funds. Yet I've still only got 30 million in my transfer budget. What is that about? Uh, the, board uh, the board sometimes offers you extra money if the team is struggling. So maybe the, the system could be clever enough to see that you're in the relegation zone and that you need money. You need money to bring in new players in the in the transfer window, especially in the January transfer window, to boost your chances of staying in the league, you know? Why why do we why do we not get that anyway? It just makes sense. Every club in real world football, if they're struggling, the board is going to do everything they can. And if that means throwing money at the team, that's what they do. Also, more realistic prize money for lower league clubs. When I took uh, Nottingham Forest through to the Premier League from the Championship, I had like £15 million. In real world, you're talking hundreds of millions. That that promotional game at Wembley, the, the playoff final, that it's worth it's worth hundreds of millions. It really is. I'm not saying that's their budget the next uh, the next transfer window, but you should be getting more than say 10 million for winning the championship. It's just a bit crazy. Um, league and player stats, the ability to see player stats from previous seasons to evaluate progress and growth. Once you finish the season, that's it. They just cut it off, and then you're into the new season. You can't see. What happened in the last season? The only thing you can see is in the manager. Um, I don't know what they call it anymore. It's like when you can look at what you've done as a manager over the last few seasons. It might be manager overview or something like that. You can see how many games you've won and things like that. But you can't look at your squad stats. Your league position from the last season has just disappeared. You know, you can't see how other teams got on as well. Why is there not like a history tab? So you can go and see who the top scorer was in that particular league last season. And maybe sign that player. Just more stats to look at from the season before would be nice. Um, and also manager creation, the ability to see, uh, not that's the wrong one, manager creation, more options when creating your manager, including your own game face. Now, how cool would it be if you could take a picture of your own face? They used to have this for pro clubs. I still think they do. Um, you can actually put your face on your player. Why is there not a manager one? Why can't, you know, they, they were they went all in last season with this new HD manager thing. You know, you can create your own manager Although you can't change the appearance, there's a there's a couple of, of uh, selection options that you can choose. And they look pretty good, but why can you not put your own face on them? It would be amazing. I'd love to see myself in the game. But um, I'm going to go on to one last thing here because I don't want the video going on forever. But I do have one last point. And that is, of course, probably you know what's coming, online career mode. Why is this still something we're talking about? I wish they would just, just either say a yes or a no. If they're going to do it, when? Because it feels like this is quite possibly that, that last thing that can get career mode going again. An online career mode, being able to play with your friends would be so, so cool. I know it's really difficult to implement and I, I'm sure there's lots of issues with it. 
and potential annoyances as well that you know if your mate's not ready to play a game you're just gonna be sitting in the menu it'd be kind of it'd be kind of lame wouldn't it so i don't know if this is ever going to happen it feels like it's not but ea haven't said no or yes so it kind of makes me feel like they're saving this for a last resort type thing or maybe it's actually happening this year who knows what's gonna happen i really doubt it but online career mode is always something that comes up everyone wants to know if this is something that could happen and I'm sure it could happen, but will it? That's a different story. But that's going to be it, guys. That's the end of my career mode wish list. There's probably more I've forgotten. I've gone through a long list, like two pages here, and it's uh, it's a lot of stuff. And even if just a couple of these things make it into FIFA 18, I'll be somewhat happy. But as I said at the start of the video, it does feel like career mode gets neglected. And as a career mode YouTuber, I mean, I've been doing YouTube for seven and a half years, pretty much. And I've been doing career mode for five. It's it's getting to the point now where there isn't much we can do. There really isn't. It gets it gets old very quickly. It feels like within two or three months of the new game being out, no one's really bothered about career mode anymore. And there's not much you can do to to come up with fresh ideas and things like that. You know, this new experiment hype thing. I know a lot of FIFA YouTubers are doing these career mode experiments. Whilst I think they're great. They're not going to last forever. I mean, you're going to run out of ideas. There's only so much you can do. And I think some of these ideas would improve even that aspect of this community. Being able to do better experiments and trying out different things. And I hope that that doesn't go. I love watching them. It's interesting to see what, what people can do with career mode. But we're so limited and it, it is kind of frustrating. So hopefully some of this makes it in FIFA 19 at least. And uh, I'll see you next year for this same exact video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.